Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Trick Game to Come video, we're going to be discussing Intel. Well, let's face it, Intel have been somewhat on the back foot recently, which is very unusual for the company. They have typically enjoyed rather a healthy lead, at least over the past several years, over AMD. AMD in the past have certainly been quite competitive. In the early days of the Athlons, even the Athlon 64s, it's fair to say that AMD were more synonymous with gaming, and perhaps Intel were more synonymous with content creation with the Pentium 4, for example, and its type of running. Intel right now are looking to take back not just the desktop, but also the high-end desktop, perhaps being rather concerned with Threadripper. So we're going to be talking about some leaks which have occurred over the past 24 or so hours with the X299 platform as well as the Z370 platform. A lot of these leaks actually are thanks to a website by the name of Dr. Mola. At least I'm assuming that's how you pronounce it. It has a slide which has obviously leaked onto the internet. And assuming it's accuracy, we'll get into that in just a second, it does provide a rather profound insight into what, AMD, uh, sorry, what Intel are doing. Now this slide, I won't read out some of it because quite frankly a lot of it's fairly benign and obvious and you know when it comes to the number of uh, USB ports for the sake of argument I'm pretty sure you can read that quite easily. But there are definitely some interesting uh, things here which perhaps might cause your head to have a few itches. The first is, well, performance and tuning capabilities are listed with full base clock and tuning controls. IO, IO port flexibility with SATA, USB, 3 and PCIe. Uh, Intel's rapid state storage, which means it has absolutely so much RAID support that you could probably shake a stick at it. RAID 0, 1, 5 and 10. As well as absolutely and unequivocally support for the integrated um, Intel's if Ethernet connection 1219 at Jacksonville. God, that sentence was really difficult to say for some reason. It looks like any of the Intel X299 platform CPUs can be overclocked. We'll go more to that in just a second. But the thing that's causing a lot of confusion is the memory channels, which is listed to be 4 slash 1. So we have 4 memory channels, and DIMMs per channel is just a single one, which is very different from, let's say, oh, I don't know, picking something out of the air here, the X. 99, which offered, um, well, you know, two uh, DIMMs per channel, which leads us to some questions of like, well, what's going on? Was it a scrub with the slide? Is it only pertaining to certain CPUs? Because obviously we don't have all of the information right here, or is it something else entirely going on? Unfortunately, I'm going to just have to say, I don't know. Um, there could be some speculation that I could do, but quite honestly, we're going to have most of this information over the next few days anyway, so I'll leave it up to you, and we can probably have a much more, you know, better basis to discuss this in just a few days. Apart from that, there are more leaks concerning the processors. Um, there is some pricing information, but I'll get to that last because it's a different set of leaks to this set of leaks. God, there are so many leaks. Anyway, very quick recount of the different processors. They start as i9, and there are also some i7s. Essentially, you're looking at Skylake X for the higher-end systems, oh, sorry, CPUs, and then you've got Kaby Lake X, which is for the lower end. We'll get to the Skylake X processors first. These are i9 7920X, which offers 12 cores, 24 threads. We don't know the clock speeds for this one, but it looks like the total cache on this behemoth is about 16.5 megabytes of level 3, and also Skylight X CPUs will feature an LLC of 1.375 megabytes uh, per core, and a mid-level cache, which is an L2 cache, just for uh, clarification, of 1 megabyte. So each core has about 2.375 megabytes of cache available, which means just under 30 megabytes if you start doing all the math, on that for the entire chip. That is kind of bonkers. Um, unfortunately, once again, we don't know clock speed just yet, but what we do know is it does offer 44 PCIe lanes, which in theory means that you should not need to worry about IO whatsoever. Perhaps the better value chips are going to be the two lower, uh, lower end chips though, which is the 7900X and the 7820X. The 7900X offers um, a 4.5 gigahertz turbo speed, that's Intel Turbo 3.0, but the base clock is just 3.3 uh, megahertz, oh, sorry, 3.3 gigahertz, rather, not megahertz, 
Uh, this chip is 10 cores and 20 threads. So it is quite a lot. If you think about it, it's going to be very interesting to see if Intel, um, especially when we get into pricing in just a second, can justify the additional cost for just an extra two cores. Now, I don't want to bring in, you know, Threadripper too much because we frankly don't know benchmarks of the processors. But assuming Threadripper delivers what's promised along with this delivering what's promised, my only concern for Intel is if Z, sorry, the the 7920X is quite expensive, you might run into issues where, yes, if folks really need those additional cores, let's say they do a lot of 3D rendering work or virtual machine work, that type of thing, then perhaps going Threadripper would make more sense, whereas on the other hand, the 7900X may make more sense if you're doing a lot of video editing and coding, but also gaming's your kind of gig as well. So in other words, yes, you want the best single thread performance, in other words, you want a high um, clock speed for per core, but you also want a lot of threads available. And, you know, budget is also maybe a bit of a concern. The next is, well, getting kind of cheaper, and that is the 7820X. This offers eight cores, 16 threads. So this chip is going to run at 4.5 gigahertz base, so exactly the same. Basically, this chip is almost identical to all of the others in terms of the amount of cash available per core and all of that. It just obviously scales linearly because you have far fewer cores available. This could be very popular. I do suspect this one's going to be quite popular indeed. The only concern with this chip is that obviously if you compare it to like the 1800, uh, I'm sorry, the 1700 or the 1800X, it, sound, it sounds kind of pricey. Once again, it's going to really boil down to the single thread performance of being higher for this chip and obviously the fact that you've got, you know, so much uh, robust uh, NVMe support and all of that other bits and bobs on this particular motherboard, uh, sorry, on this particular platform, which potentially could push certain users towards it. The lower end is the 7800X, which has just six uh, cores and 12 threads. Basically identical, say it with me now, base clocker for uh, 3.5 gigahertz, 4 gigahertz with turbo, and, you know, linearly the same amount of cache as well. This is definitely the cheapest. Perhaps the two head-scratchy processors are the 7740X and the 7640X. Now, originally, these were being reported to be an i7 and i5, respectively. The 7640X is just a quad-core chip with only four threads, and there's no SMT, hyper-threading, available. But it looks like this is no longer going to be the case. The chip is based on a 14NM Plus process, so in theory, we should be looking at this, uh, this chip being able to overclock way beyond what the traditional cable leg is able to uh, hit, uh, in theory, as long as they improve the TIM as well. And the 7740X is almost identical. It runs at 4.5 GHz boost, but naturally um, has SMT hyperthreading. This is going to be quite an interesting set because uh, getting very much quickly into the pricing, because obviously this stuff is not uh, confirmed, we're looking at the, um, and this is according to another website, which I'm probably going to butcher the name of, hd-technologica.com. And they're reporting, and we're going down the stack here, so high-end, we're going at Intel uh, i9-7920X at $1,700, the 7900X at $1,100, the 7820X at $650, the 7800 at $440, and then you've got the two lower-end chips, the KB Lake ones, which are $350 and $220, respectively, for either the 7740 or the 7640K. Obviously, one can make a very compelling argument that those two chips have their uses if you merely need the additional I.O. or perhaps other platform connectivity. But for a lot of folks, it's kind of an expensive ask because obviously then you're jumping onto a platform which is kind of costly. It's also a bit weird, and I've mentioned this a couple of times over, but the real, the real weird thing about Intel is the fact that they're releasing Coffee Lake S with up to six cores. Now, from what we can what we can understand, it looks like the processor launch is going to take place around August. So that's not too long at all, really, if you think about it. I mean, right now we're very much in the end of May, so only a, only a couple of months, and when we're going to start hitting a, um, hitting the launch window. So the new information here is that basically 
this particular platform is going to be launching on the Coffee Lake PCH, also known as the Z370 chipset. We have known that for a while, but it's going to be using an LGA 1151 V2 socket. Now, yes, in terms of pin count, it's going to be identical to an LGA 1151, aka the same thing that's on a Skylake or Cable Lake platform, but it looks like Intel are offering a clear delimination here. The V2 uh, sticker, if you will, is going to basically say, hey, don't use this with the other one. Now, what's going to happen if you put in a Coffee Lake CPU into a KB Lake motherboard or vice versa? Uh, is it going to explode? Are we going to create a black hole and swallow the universe? Is it going to work? Is it not going to recognize it? I don't know. Um, personally, I think it's going to kind of suck if that's the case. I can understand them doing it if there's a particular reason. Either way, um, moving away from the speculation... Obviously, we have an increase in the core count. We've got six cores uh, compared to just the mainstream of four. Frankly, I'm bloody glad of that. I think it's about time we see that move from Intel. It's about time we see six cores for the mainstream. In fact, it could actually put Intel in a very, well, good position. And it might make AMD sweat a little bit because, yes, AMD do have those additional two cores, but... If Intel can be rather aggressive with the clock speeds, let's say they can hit about 4.5 gigahertz, that is rather a difference from what Ryzen can hit. I mean, yes, Ryzen can hit about 3.8 to 4.2, obviously depending upon your caller. Let's say an average of around 4. For most users, it's quite comfortable, assuming you don't have a really good piece of silicon, assuming you don't have an awesome motherboard, and assuming you don't have the best AIO in the world. But on the other hand, if this just hits like 4.5 gigahertz out of the gate, and assuming Intel, once again, it's a big ask, don't screw up with the TIM, that could be a really, really good win for Intel. Anyway, um, the other major thing is that Intel, uh, and this is a rumor from what I can understand, will be making the i5 models to be the first with full SMT support. That means hyper-threading will mean that we have eight cores, which is really cool. That is a massive upgrade from the current uh, i5s where you've got obviously just four cores and four threads. This is probably a real demonstration that Intel are definitely taking Ryzen quite seriously. And, you know, one of the things that AMD have used in their market li marketing literature constantly is that, you know, oh, if you if you spend X amount on a i5 CPU from Intel, you only get four cores and four threads. If you spend that amount of money on a Ryzen 5, you can get like, you know, 12 threads. It's quite the difference, especially mentally. So we're going to have to wait and see. Uh, last thing, uh, supposedly, there's going to be there's the announcement that Intel are moving towards 10nm CPUs, and that's going to happen by Q1 2018. And that is pretty much all we know. Um, it's supposedly for the Intel Canon Lake CPU, but there's no information other than that, unfortunately. So... Hopefully you have found this video enjoyable. There's a lot of kind of miscellaneous bits of infos on this video. It's kind of some stuff we already knew and some information we didn't. But either way, hopefully you've enjoyed it. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.